they want. So it's not like there was a lot riding on it. it there, there was once the fight started, and I like <laughs> you realize <laughs> it became yeah. real. Yeah, the heart starts racing, and then you start watching, and then especially how like the the fight like how actually it played happened. Out. Yeah. Um, yeah, my heart was racing a lot. Throughout it was a fight. pretty hectic fight. Obviously, we're going right into the fucking analysis, but uh dc's way of fighting i think i like i like forget about it every time then it happens and he just keeps his hands up it's like mm-hmm. how do you punch this he's just in an unreachable yeah. wall and he's i mean there's always a threat of him just picking you up and throwing you down well he definitely does the the finger thing a little too much and it's yeah, only he, because he's trying to he's yeah. got to keep his distance yes yeah, so he's trying to get in there make anyway. up for the lack of range that right. he is losing because he's fucking it's incredibly people clever. Way bigger than him. Right. Way taller than him with way bigger reach in that. You could tell it confused, not, maybe not confused, Steepy, but stumped him in a little way. There was a time I got jabbed in the eye, but. Mm-hmm. Which, it's kind of shitty because it happened from the previous fight, too, yeah. and it's like something that's clearly illegal. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it was not to do that. Right. Um, they both combined for 304 significant strikes landed. Jesus. Total. And that is a record for any heavyweight fight of all time. Well, sure. I mean, you get to half that number. Someone's usually on the mat. Right. Uh, Miocic is now third all time in heavyweight history for strikes thrown and strikes landed. Heavyweight goat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I you guess said so. mm-hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, who, I'll talk the about only that. person he compete with is Daniel Cormier. Yes. And he beat Daniel Cormier. Mio- Miocic also had one of the biggest comebacks come from behind wins. With sure. as far as significant strikes, because he landed fifty eight significant strikes less than DC did, huh? Which is like the fourth time ever in UFC history where a heavyweight has won the championship without landing more strikes. I believe that, and his pretty is crazy. Like pretty crazy. Like fifty eight is a big difference. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, to talk about the fight, like DC dominated his ass the first Kicked round. The first entire round was complete DC, and like watching that, I was like so like oh. This is gonna be good. This night. is easy. <laughs> they won. DC won. I'm fucking pumped. I and, was and then uh, in the second round was a little bit more competitive, but clearly DC was landing more strikes. He was yeah. faster. He uh, oh, in the first round too, that slam, that Just slam, fucking he lifted him little, up, little, little hung there for a little bit. I was like, he's about to do a wrestling move. <laughs> Just set him down real, yeah. real hard. And uh, landed some good ground up pound after yeah. the slam too. And then the second round, he was out striking him. And then the third round was a little bit more competitive. I, I would not have argue with somebody if they said steep a one round three but i felt like dc clearly won the first three rounds mm-hmm. okay and uh but the momentum was going where he was dominating to slowly being more competitive He's slowing down yeah <clears throat> dc's coaches were begging him to implement his first round game plan of mixing in the takedowns and trying yeah. to take him down at and least trying to do ground upon propose the threat DC fell in love with the striking game. Yeah. And uh, Stipe capitalized on it on the fourth round. Landed about 85,000 body shots in a row. I think it was like seven, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell. There was like a moment where he was like, boom. Oh, shit. That yeah. worked. Those were brutal. He did a lot. And, uh, yeah. yeah one it. of his coaches told him to do it in between the round. And, uh, oh, okay. He kept fucking landing that vicious body shot. And it's just, like it's true when they say body, 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 head. Like, the more strikes you land to the body, the easier the head will be. I think the clearest example is when we watched uh, Shevchenko knock the fuck out yeah. of Jessica I, oh, right? Yeah. She just keeps kicking the stomach, and she has to defend it. Otherwise, you're going to lose your kidney and then mm-hmm. right in yeah. the face. And uh, Stipe mixed up his shots, landed a fucking huge bomb to DC's chin. Yep. DC ro- got rocked clearly. Stumbled back. Stipe swarmed him. And, same uh, shot, that same right. Yeah, that right hand. It was a good stoppage. DC was out of it. It sucked seeing just because you could see DC was clearly winning the fight. He just didn't know how to stop that body shot in a in a good way, other than just eating it and hoping yeah. for the best. And then uh, it was kind of rough, man. It, it was, was rough. rough watching. I was happy for Stipe. I thought his dance at the end was kind of was weird. Uh, Come on. Is he Irish? <laughs> it was he weird. Even, he even said he wished he didn't do it. He felt like it was tasteless, and he doesn't know why he did it. He was just so I mean, spur of the moment. Yeah, he was just all the emotions of not fighting in a year, and then thinking he deserves the rematch, and then Probably had Lesnar some... just coming in there and taking it from him, and then doesn't take it from him, and then DC's not fighting. Why isn't he fighting? Oh, he was injured this whole time, but I didn't know, but that's fucking stupid. I deserve my title shot, and then everyone would say, you're a bitch. You're just crying about shit, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I'm sure there's a lot of emotion. With I this imagine fight. there's a lot of doubt. I, obviously, uh, DC beat him the first time. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, yeah, Stipe said he even watched the first fight, which it clearly fucking showed, in my opinion, because I think Stipe th- still thought that no matter what, he's just better than DC. And yeah. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I don't think so either. I think if uh, DC had stuck to the game plan, uh, one of the reasons I thought I had picked Stipe 
I'm gonna put that on record. I picked Paulo Costa <laughs> and Steve A. to win. Allegedly, <laughs> with the fucking Paulo Costa. I like how you sneak that in. Let's to sneak that in. Make sure everyone knows. Uh, one of the reasons I thought it would be Cormier is because it seemed like Cormier was underestimating him, saying he was just gonna end his end his life and embarrass him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what he wanted to do. He was pounding his face in from the start, and he wanted to keep doing that. He could have just taken him down and pounded him that way, but yeah, he got punched in the stomach instead. <clears throat> yeah, he even um he. This was part of my hot takes, but I'll talk about it now. Could have um, just transitioned into the hot takes. That's fine. We can transition to the hot takes. So, speaking of hot takes, we're just jumping into Hot takes! Um, DC, this is one of the statements that he said on mm-hmm. Instagram. Okay. He just posted this today. He said, it's been a couple of days, and I can't stress the disappointment. I am so sorry to all I have left, to all I have let down. To my wife and kids, I am so sorry you guys had to experience that. I never <laughs> wanted y'all to see that. And the hurt you guys showed breaks my heart every time I think about it. My coaches, I'm sorry. I appreciate the work and time you've spent with me. My fans, thank you guys for all the love and support you have guided me to all these amazing accomplishments. Stipe and his team, congratulations on a tremendous victory. You showed so much heart and grit, and you are the definition of Cleveland Tough. Dana White and all the UFC, thank you for everything you have done for me and my family. This has been the most amazing journey. I will decide what I'm going to do now, and as soon as I decide, you will all know right away. Love you all, DC. This bitch is retiring. Yeah, (laughs) probably. I think he should. That's when you were asking me who's the best heavyweight, and I was like, yeah, I guess Stipe. But it's like, the thing that sucks is DC started his fucking MMA career so late in the game. Like 35 years old. Yeah. And he's only been fighting for about like five years. I I don't know. I don't know. Don't fucking... Don't quote me on the time. My yeah. point is he fought his MMA career like very, very late because of the Olympics and wrestling right. and all that shit. And he ain't getting any younger. So it's tough to say that like... like if they Even you. if they DC and Stipe were to do a, a rematch next year, DC would it's, still be a very... like You couldn't just say Stipe's going to win that fight no matter what. Right. Even though DC is up there in years. <laughs> right. So you're saying if like you put them up against their peaks, DC would win. I would say so, yes, but that's irrelevant because it that is, can't yeah. happen. True. It's just like I would rather have DC retire now even though it's not on the biggest high note that he would want. Mm. I just think the risk of it getting worse yeah. is not worth the reward of you winning one more fight because everybody still thinks you could, you can beat Stipe because you were clearly winning for three rounds. Yeah. Well, and, he even said before the fight that the only fight he takes after the fight is mm-hmm. John Jones or he walks. Right. But I'm I, sure I after doubt he loss. factored in that he would be losing right. to Stipe. And he's so competitive, and that's why he gets so emotional about these things. Oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm sure he wants it back bad, but what if he loses again? Because that's another possibility. Mm-hmm. Then you go from 22-2 and two to 22-3, and three, just like that. In your last four fights, you only won one of them. True. Oh, it's no, kind of... No. One, like... If you're out of your last five fights, you're th- two and three because yeah. you beat Steve Bay and then you beat Vulcan Ozdemir before that. But then you lost to John Jones before the Vulcan fight and then you lost to Steve Bay. Right. And if you fight again and you lose to Steve Bay. Or Jones, yeah. Yeah, it's really tough. It's like everybody knows you're one of the you're one of the best of all time right now. Yeah. So I think it's bullshit that he's apologizing. He has nothing to apologize for. He's pro- he's yeah. like the best fighter in the I game. I think he's. Super sorry to his coaches because he didn't implement didn't the game listen. plan. They were begging him, and he said he just fell in love with it. And he did the same thing in the Gus fight, mm. where in the first round he took Gus down pretty easily, and then the rest of the fight they were just boxing each other out, and he won a decision. That was a very tough decision, and that was like that was the trend of this fight. Mm. But then he got caught. That's the risk when you're playing yeah. a fighting game. It's true, especially with someone who's like Stipe's relatively one dimensional when it comes to fighting styles. He's there to box you. <clears throat> He's he has great footwork, he has great boxing, he has great wrestling, and he has knockout power. So he can do the cardio five-round decision thing right. against fighters that are like that have a shit ton of knockout power that is like a lot bigger than him. Like he did that with Mark Hunt. Right. He did that with, uh, what's his name, Nganu. Mm-hmm. And he's done that in the past with a few other fighters. But since then, he's kind of fallen in love with this fucking knockout power True. yeah which justifiably so because he's been on a terror fighting everybody and beating everybody not named dc and ganu but uh yeah i mean he did beat him down. my bad <laughs> we'll see what happens in the rematch yeah that my i think th- is that the next fight for stipe and ganu either that or dc guess it depends on what dc decides yeah or jones 
Which Jones tweeted some shit after the fight, which I thought was kind of fucking. What do you say? He said, I guess losses are a bigger deal with all the money up in the front end, huh? Because DC said something about he makes so much money in the front end now that he doesn't need to fight John Jones anymore. And John Jones needs to fight him to get his money. Cause Fuck you, John Jones! <laughs> he's just throwing salt in the wound. And then he also said Steve is the best heavyweight ever. That's all I'm going to say. But then he also said the other shit. you remove all the other <laughs> shit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, another thing I wanted to talk about before this, before we're done talking about this fight, was mm-hmm. uh, the weigh-ins for this fight. Yeah. Stipe weighed in at 230 pounds, 230.5, and then DC weighed in at 236.5 pounds. But uh, I read this article literally before we podcasted about the weights of the fighters before they actually uh, fought, fought like the day of. So like in between the weigh-in and the actual yeah, fight? Yeah, like Saturday morning they re-weighed or whatever, or Saturday before the fight. Stipe weighed in at 230, so like same exact. Almost half a pound? Yeah, same weight. And DC weighed in at 247 pounds. It's so 11 pounds? Yeah. Which I thought was... So, like, he was cutting weight, or... Yeah, and people were saying that he was in the sauna before, so I wonder I wonder why he cut 11 pounds. Was he trying to trick Stipe? Was it something that you're trying to get in their head, saying you're, like, in phenomenal, phenomenal shape? Regardless, 240 pounds is less than what he was fighting at with his other fights. Maybe he just wanted it to be lighter, and so he cut... And then I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I I just thought it was interesting. I don't know if I have like I don't know the reason behind it, the method behind the madness. Maybe he's just so used to cutting weight in his fight camps, they just made him do it just to like a routine. You don't want to break the routine. Yeah, I read a quote on the subject actually. Uh, It's a metaphor, but I think it works. Uh, Someone said you have to march into a battle. You don't just wake up and walk in. Yeah. So that could be something related to how he's just just that's just prep. That's how he does it. Ready for a fight. Yeah. But I thought that was odd. But uh. What's next for Stipe is definitely it's either gonna be it's either Ngannou if DC is not fighting mm-hmm. ever if he retires, or it's John Jones if John wants to step up to heavyweight. Which, if he does, that'll be a tough fight for him. I got Stipe in that fight. Really? Mm-hmm. I think Stipe. I mean, he shows he has the chin. Yeah, to survive. I don't think John Jones is gonna knock Stipe yeah, out. Yeah, he doesn't have and the. I, and I think John does have great wrestling. But it's a whole new beast at heavyweight. Yeah. Where you're not fight you're gonna be fighting people just as strong as you. And you're gonna be fighting people that are that have knockout power at one punch at any given time in the fight. So you you have to be a lot smarter with the, with the decisions that you make. True. And uh <clears throat> I just don't see him just taking Stipe down and submitting him. Well then I hope that fight happens because I want to see John Jones lose. <laughs> but more, I think the more interesting fight to me would be uh, Nganu. Yeah. I mean, he's shown improvements, maybe. Oh, yeah. He's definitely shown that he's learned in this fight game. It'd be interesting to see how much he's learned, actually. And I think I would lean towards Ngannou in the rematch, honestly, just because it's hard not to. I know, right? Like, yeah, I think the, the percent of him landing that kaboom is mm-hmm. higher than him. him Another him thing, starts like that. too, that I thought was interesting is you see how many strikes that Stipe absorbed this fight. and uh, It was a lot. I thought he was going to fall down at any moment. And I wonder, Dan Hardy was talking about this with Joe Rogan, and it's like, does a punch land harder when you're not expecting it to be that powerful? Like when he fought in Ganu, he hmm. ate a lot of hard strikes, but he's expecting these he's fucking fu- Ganu. Look at his arms. Yeah, he's gonna knock you out with any of these punches. So you think maybe if he underestimated uh, Daniel's he, striking in the first fight, he was questioning if that's a thing. Is if if you in your head are telling yourself. This guy can't knock me out, or he can't punch hard. <laughs> I'm way bigger than him. But then you get mm. hit, and then you get knocked out. Opposed to you're fighting somebody a lot bigger than you, and you preemptively, in your head, and you're telling yourself that he can knock me out, he can hit really hard. If there's something that's going on internally, as far, even if it's just like blood flow or something weird that like I'm like clenching your jaw or the something. shit out of it. Yeah, but if, there, if there's something there, and I wonder mm-hmm. if that. I wonder if that's the case because obviously he knows that DC could have knocked him out in the second fight obviously. and he ate a lot of fucking blows. He ate a lot. And uh, he didn't get dropped. It's interesting. Because I've always, I've always heard like, obviously it doesn't apply directly, but in car crashes, if you're not if you're not conscious, you uh, take less damage and right, if you were, you you're bracing up. for it and shit. Right. So if, it seems like if you weren't expecting it and you're not bracing for it, then it would do less damage. But maybe but they it's not. But they always say fighting, it's the shot you don't see. That's true. So obviously, it's not comparable. <laughs> the fuck, science? Get your shit together? <laughs> Give me some patterns here to follow. But overall, 
Good job, Stipe. You yeah. got the job done. DC, you did great. You, you Nothing did, to apologize for. You to go to my eyes, retire south to the sunset, enjoy your fucking post-fighting career doing all right. kinds of uh, media shit, acting shit, because you're I'm great sure at everything. I'm sure he'll stay coaching. Oh, yeah. Uh, he'll stay in that camp. And yeah, I bet you that boy got a balloon guys. up, though. <laughs> what retires. do you mean balloon up? <laughs> He's going to fucking start weighing 275 pounds. <laughs> Jesus. Nah. <laughs> 